But remember to stay safe, wear your safety glasses, and we'll see you for the next one. Now that's the way most of my videos over at Black Bear Forge end. In fact, most of them begin right here at this bench. We've been looking at this scene for years now. And while things don't change a lot, some of the more observant viewers have been looking at something right back over in this room here that isn't finished yet. And people have been asking, what's going on back there? So let's take a look in that room and we're gonna look at some mudslinging today. Now this little addition to the shop back here is inspired by the Earthship concept, which is the brainchild of an architect from New Mexico named Michael Reynolds. And Earthships are built using lots of recycled material, material that is generally destined for the landfill, primarily tires, but also cans and bottles. But essentially this is a room built out of tires that are filled with dirt and sledgehammered until they are a solid rubber encased brick. That means each tire weighs about 300 pounds. There's about three or four wheelbarrows full of dirt sledgehammered into each tire. Those are stacked up. A concrete beam is poured over the top of it. And that's what this is right through here. And that's what retains the earth on the outside of the building. Ground level outside is right about here. So the tires are essentially a big retaining wall and this is an earth bermed structure back here. Now the roof is actually supported by a post and a beam structure. It's more conventional framing from the concrete bond beam up to the ceiling. But this infill here is just that. It's just infill. It's not serving any structural purpose. It's like the wattle and daub in a timber frame structure. In fact, it's not much different. Both are just mud. The tires are beginning to get some infill between them of adobe mud as well as what the cans are set in. And this is what will level it out and prepare it for plaster. And when I say it's just mud, I mean it's mud. This is just dirt dug out of the floor right here in this same little room. And I'm going to add some straw to this. We're lucky here. We have pretty high clay content in our soil. And therefore we can just use the soil as is for making adobe type clay. For real adobe to actually make bricks out of, we need to add a little bit of sand. We actually have too much clay. But this gets some straw in it to help bind it. Also helps suck some of the extra water out of it. So this really is then just a matter of putting some mud down on this ledge. Part of the point of this is that it's very organic looking very natural, very free form. And therefore you don't have to worry about perfect straight parallel lines. And for that matter, it lends itself quite well to curvy walls, domes, vaults, things like that. But with a little, little bit of mud there or adobe, you just crush a, the corner of the can just a little bit so it'll bite into the mud. Now this method is often used, or I should say most often used, with actually a cement mortar because these walls can be self-supporting. This is a short wall. It's supported by my post and beam structure. It doesn't need to have a whole lot of strength on its own, but if it needs its own strength, it's not that big a deal to make this out of mortar. I don't know if they can be load bearing or not, but I have seen some domes and the dome itself then becomes load bearing, but I don't know if just a wall done this way, if people make them load bearing, but they're extremely useful, free form, don't need to have a, a form to pour concrete. The cans help support it. You do a little bit at a time, and then you do a little bit more later, and sooner or later, it all gets done. Once you get a row of cans in, you just put some more mud on top of those. Then we 
just offset the next row of cans like this. And the open ends of the cans facing out is what makes the lath for the plaster that will cover this in the long run. Now another common component in a wall like this are bottles. And those bottles are just cut to the right length, just depends on how thick your wall is going to be. And they're going to be duct taped together, just so they form a single unit. Nothing pretty about this, it's going to be encased in mud. So there we have a bottle brick. Use different jars, different kinds of bottles. It doesn't really matter that much. We put another row of adobe down. This bud is perhaps a little bit on the wet side. It's not going to hurt anything, but I won't be able to go up any further than three rows today. Now this foam insulation is not something you typically see in a wall like this. Usually the bottles or the cans are exposed on both sides and they get plastered over on both sides. Or you leave the butt end of the can exposed all on one side of the wall and only plaster the other end. Just depends on the look you're going for. But I thought I would experiment with putting some insulation in so that the adobe on the inside of the structure acts as thermal mass to help regulate heat, should make it a cooler space in the summer, maybe a little warmer in the winter. But that means if I want my bottles to show light through the ends of the bottles, which is kind of what I want, I want that stained glass effect, I gotta drill a hole in the foam for the bottle to poke through. And I'm not doing that very pretty. I don't have a hole saw exactly the size of every single bottle I'm gonna try and use. In fact, I got some gallon jars. I'm gonna make some great big windows in a few of these. So I just want to kind of get an idea. styrofoam is not going to hurt the adobe any. Want enough to support the bottle. And let it kind of squish. And I want this to stick out from the wall a little bit because I'm going to plaster all the cans, but the bottles I'm going to leave exposed. Afraid that's all the pop cans I've got for today. I want just enough mud to provide a solid base for the next time I start working on this, which will be probably three or four days to let the mud dry. Then whatever mud I've got left from the process just goes down here on the walls because ultimately that's what's gonna plaster the walls. 
But first you got to level out the holes in all the tires to make a nice surface to plaster. And once it gets level, it goes much easier. So that's just a quick introduction into can and bottle walls. I think at the very end of the video, I will link to something from the Earthship people so you can see more about what they do with their can and bottle walls. It is really quite spectacular, but they've done this a lot more than I have. This is just a little experiment in about an eight by 10 room. For those of you who are wondering, what's that oddball up to in that back room of the shop? I hope this answers your question. Yes, it's a little odd, it's a little weird. I kind of like that. I like this approach to doing things sometimes. It's just art in building and it's a lot of fun. You get to sling mud just like when you were a kid. I do hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. If you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends. But then take a moment to check out this video right over here on Earthships and how the Earthship people build can and bottle walls. Hopefully it's informative. We'll see you later.